Now that you guys are used to dynamically allocated memory, uh, let's do some quick review about returns. So on the slide, we have five different kinds of returns. We have a returning of address of a parameter. We also have returning of address of a local variable. We also have returning the address of an external variable. And we also have returning the address of a static local variable and the address of dynamically allocated memory block. So out of these five, the bottom two, which are static local variable and dynamically allocated memory, will always return properly. The other three, they will not. And for today's example, we're going to look at three different examples. So the first one is address of a parameter, and the last two are the returns that will work properly. The other two, I want you guys to experiment with it. Let's look at the first example, which is about returning the address of a local parameter. So as you can see in the code, I made a helper function called func, and it takes a parameter called parameter, and it is int type. What this helper function does is it simply just prints out the address of the local parameter, and it returns the address. If you look at the main, I initialize a variable called num, and after that, I'm printing out the address of the num, and after that, I call the helper function, and it returned an int pointer. So the reason why I returned the int pointer is because I want to print out the address of the return value. After that, I printed it out, and now let's look at the output. So after I made num, the output has its own unique value. After that, it called the helper function, called func, and within the helper function, we printed out the parameter, and it says address of parameter is equal to some unique address. Now, if you compare those two addresses, they're completely different. Now, we are returning the parameter, and if we look at the main, I printed out the address of the return parameter. Now, once we do that, um, we didn't get a very unique value. We actually got a null. So this is an example where returning address of a local parameter doesn't work properly. Let's look at a second example, which is about returning static local variables. So as you can see, I made a helper function called return static local value. And what it does is we are initializing a static variable. After that, we are printing out the address of the static variable. And after that, we are returning the address of the static local variable. In the main function, I immediately called the helper function, and I set that equal to an int pointer. The reason why I did that is so, so I can print out the address of the returned data type. If we look at the output, we can compare the address of the static local variable and the returned variable. And as you can see, they're exactly the same. This is the power of static variable. They will continue to lurk around even if we exit out of the block or the function. And we can call it whenever we want to. Let's look at a third example, which is about returning dynamically allocated variable. As you can see, I made a helper function. And within the helper function, I am allocating memory. And I am printing out the address of the allocated memory. And then I am returning the allocated memory back to the main. So if we look at the main, I call the helper function and I set it equal to an int pointer. Right after that, I am printing out the address. And after that, we cannot forget this. We have to free the allocated memory. Now, as you can see in the output, we can compare these two addresses. So as you can see, they're exactly the same. And this is the power of dynamically allocated memory. We will continuously have access to them, even if we leave the block. Let me show you guys some more examples with pointers. So as you can see, this is about multi-dimensional array and pointers. So I created a variable called A, and A is a 2x4 matrix. A contains 2, 4, 6, 8, and the next array contains 10, 12, 14, and 16. Next, we're telling the computer that we're interested in the value. So what that means is we're telling the computer that we're interested in the first array, and we're interested in the second index of the first array, which is 4. Next, we're grabbing the address of that 4. After that, we are creating a short pointer variable called p, and that p is pointed to the address of 4. So now let's look at the print statement. 
So the plus plus comes in afterwards. And right now we're telling the computer that I want to dereference the P. So dereference the P will give me 4 and it will print out 4. Next, we're incrementing it by 1. So now the address is now the address after 4, which is address of 6. Next, we're telling the computer that we want to print out P and we dereference it and print it out 6. Next, we're incrementing it and now the address that we are now pointing to is now the address of 8. Next, we are dereferencing uh, what we're pointing to and it will give us 8. Next, we're incrementing the address, so it will take us to the next array, which is 10. Next, we are dereferencing again, so the reference will give me 10. And next, we are incrementing the address that we're currently in, so it will point us to the address of 12. Let me show you in another example. So this example is kind of similar to what we had before. We still have variable A. Variable A is a 2 by 4 matrix. It contains 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. And next, we're declaring a variable called R. This variable is kind of special because it contains three pointer variables, which points to short data types. And next, we are setting the very first pointer variable of R, pointing to the address of the second array and the third element of that array, which is 14. So R0 is pointed to address of 14. And now if we're trying to print that out, all we have to do is call the dereference symbol in front of R and then the first index, and it will give us 14. Now what if we try to print out maybe the third element of R? Well, as you can see, we didn't assign anything to the third element of R. So because we didn't assign anything and the third element is not pointing to anything, it will point to a garbage value. So it printed out 142. Here's another example. We still have variable A, which is a two by four matrix. And after that, I declared a variable called S and it is an array. And this array contains four short integers. So next, we set s equal to a. So now I want to show you how we can access the matrix with s. So I'm not going to go through every single print. I'm just going to go through uh, three of them. And the other ones, I want you guys to practice it by yourselves. So this first one right here, so this will print out four. So let me show you exactly how this is working. So first, what that s does is the S represents the entire matrix. And if we dereference that, well, it's going to give us the address of the 1D array. So as you can see, that green arrow is a pointer. So I cannot print this right now because this is just the address of 2. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to increment that pointer by 1. So what that means is we are going to look at the second index. So now the green arrow has moved to 4. Now if we dereference that, well it will print out 4. And that's how 4 is being printed. Let me show you guys another example. So this one will print out 12, and S represents the entire matrix, and S of 1 represents the second array. So the pointer has now moved to the second array. And whenever we move to the next array, the pointer will always point to the very first element. So next, we are adding by 1. So remember, s of 1 is not the value. It is the address of 10. So if we add 1, that means we are telling the computer that we want to go to the next address. So this will now point to the address of 12. Now, if I want to print out 12, we have to dereference it one more time. So let me show you guys again. This is the address. If I want to print out what this address is pointing to, then I need to call the dereference symbol one more time. And that is how 
12 is printed. Here's one more example. So this will print out 10. So remember, S points to the entire matrix. And if we do S plus 1, well, what that means is that we are interested in the second array. So instead of going from 2 to 4, we are going from 2 to 10. And when we call the very first dereference symbol, well, it will only give us the address of 10. Now, if we dereference it one more time, it will give us the value of 10. So you guys might be wondering, how can we dereference twice on a single pointer variable? Well, remember, it doesn't matter what the pointer variable is. What it matters is what that pointer variable is pointed to. So if this is pointed to an array or a 2D array, well, we can call the dereference symbol multiple times to access the values within it. Let me show you guys one more example. This is about dynamic memory allocation and matrix. So as you can see in the output, this will make three by two matrix. And I will show you how C is doing this. First, we're initializing two variables. One's called rows, the other one's called columns. Rows equal to three, columns equal to two. Next, we dynamically memory allocated total of 24 bytes of memory because rows equal to three and end pointer is eight. So eight times three will give us 24. And we set this equal to a double pointer called matrix. So if you look at the grid, it took in six blocks. So the reason why it took six blocks is because each block contains four bytes of memory. So instead of two, like last time. So now let's look at the for loop. So what the for loop does is it will dynamically memory allocate again. So it will go through 0, 1, and 2. And matrix 0 will point to two blocks of memory because columns equal to 2, sides of end is equal to 4. So that's a total of 8 bytes. And at the next iteration, it will also allocate another 8 bytes of memory. At the third iteration, it will also allocate another 8 bytes of memory. So as you can see, I color coded them each individually. So brown, khaki, and yellow. To access the brown ones, well, we have to call M00, M01. And to access the, um, the other ones, we need to access by M10, M11. To access the yellow blocks, we need to access by doing M20 and M21. Now let's dive into the for loop. So what this for loop does is it will go through each individual blocks. So it will go through the brown, the khaki and the yellow blocks. And it will go in there and it will assign numbers into them appropriately and it will print them out. So at the first iteration of the outer for loop, the brown boxes are assigned to be zero and one. The next two are assigned to be two and three. And lastly, the yellow boxes are assigned to be four and five. And if we print them, we get 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5. Lastly, we have to free them. So in order to free them, we have to make a for loop that goes through the brown and the khaki and the yellow boxes. So at the first iteration, it will free all the brown boxes. At the second iteration, it will free out all the khaki colored boxes. And lastly, it will free all of the yellow boxes. But here's a problem. We still have to free those blue boxes right there. So in order to do that, what we can do is we just have to call free matrix. And this will free the first memory allocated blocks in the beginning. 